State's Coast Guard did nearly 20,000 searches for missing boaters last year, and not all of them had successful outcomes. Yeah, some were called off before crews found the person or people they had looked for. WECT's Daniela Hanke spoke to members of the Coast Guard to find out about decisions to start or stop a search. Daniela, they told you that having some specific information goes a long way to helping find someone missing on the water. Yes, Fran, and with modern technology, the Coast Guard can take information from a boater's family and friends and get the search started. Without it, crews may search in the wrong area and take much longer to find who they are looking for. Mayday, 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 I'm out here in the uh, hook and uh, take a look out. I need some help with boat sinking. It's one of the calls that the Coast Guard never wants to hear. A boater in distress. Sector 160, Operation Dayton, location, bank channel, wave. When this kind of call comes into the Coast Guard Command Center, crews take their first steps in starting a search. The, the beginning of any case is, I would say, probably the most important when we are in active information gathering mode, right? So we're trying to gather as much information as possible to understand um, essentially the narrative of what's going on. Information that a boater's family can provide to search crews in case something should go wrong on the water. It's always highly encouraged that they file a float plan, meaning they, they tell a friend or, or a family member where they're going and how long they intend to be out there. The more information that we have that we can put in um, to our search variables, well, the, the end result is a better search plan. Missing boaters could spend hours, even days, alone on the water. Sasha Scheller knows the feeling after he fell into the ocean while boating alone. Slipped on the fish hook and just rolled right over the side. And unfortunately, I had taken the life jacket off prior to that, so I didn't have anything with me. He spent hours treading water alone. No one knew what had happened. His rescuers, his heroes, were a father and son. We look in the pilot seat and there's no one driving, which is almost pretty eerie. So first, it was just weird having a boat come that close offshore. Second off, we don't see anybody in the boat, so my dad immediately yells and he goes, hey, hey, like, is anyone on board? They found Scheller's boat, jumped on board, and started driving in the water for survivors. A tiring Scheller saw his own boat get closer. I just started swimming towards it and used all this energy I had just to get my body as high up out of the water as I could and just start waving my arms. <clears throat> so uh, it ended up being my boat. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's a crazy feeling when you have to go through all this. And it's still fresh two years later. Two years later, Scheller lives by new rules on the water. Not to go out by yourself. As much as I enjoyed the, the peaceful serenity of it, um, it doesn't make sense. If, if anything happens, just to have somebody else on the boat or somebody else with you that, that you can rely on to, to go through something if you need help and assistance. Um, the second one is not to take your safety equipment for granted and to actually use it. Who's in the boat? Oh, uh, Tyler, a buddy. All right, hold on, honey. I'm going to bring in the Coast Guard. Don't hang up. Tyler Doyle disappeared in January while boating in North Myrtle Beach. Coast Guard crews searched areas off North and South Carolina coasts before finally calling it off. Suspending a case is, is one of the hardest decisions uh, that the Coast Guard faces only after we've exhausted all means uh, will the discussion of suspending the case be brought to will be brought up. Suspending that case can be heartbreaking for family and friends to hear. And I'm sure it's hard when you have to tell those family or friends we have to call off the search. There's nothing more. Right. It is our policy. You know, it is the Coast Guard's policy that in these cases that go um, for that that go for days. Um, that we are interacting with family and friends um, through the case. If it starts to look like we're gonna need to suspend within the coming days, um, we have those conversations of what else can we do? Most people lost at sea stay lost. That's according to the Coast Guard. It's a harsh reality that these crews deal with every day while exhausting every resource to reunite loved ones. We'll, we'll go down every avenue possible to, to find um, 
you know, to find the person that we're looking for or persons that we're looking for. Now, both the Coast Guard and Scheller told me that it's also up to the boater to make sure you stay safe when heading out on the water and always, always have that communication and safety tools. They can make the difference between life and death. Daniela Hankey, WECT News.